Howdy folks! In the previous tutorial, we set up a Go application for handling user accounts with automatic reloading behind a traffic reverse proxy, all running in a Docker development environment. Today, we'll set up the Web Framework Gen to route HTTP requests to our application for proper handling. These routes will serve as the gateway from the web to our application. We'll also discuss setting up environment variables to inject into our Docker containers. After completing this tutorial, we'll be ready to discuss the application's architecture and begin implementing its features. I'm in VS Code where we left off last tutorial. Make sure the application is up and running by running docker compose up in the project's root folder. You can see I've already run it here. The first thing we're going to do is create a handler folder and file as the launch point for our, wait for it, handler package. Okay, maybe I made you wait a little too long. I'm now going to add some package configuration code to this file. We create a handler struct. Currently, it doesn't contain any fields, but eventually it will hold services which will contain the methods for our application's logic. And our route handlers need to be able to access these methods. We also create a config struct which receives properties we need for our handler package to function. For now, we only include a reference to the gen engine created in main.go, but we'll add fields for these services I previously mentioned. The new handler factory, highlighted here, will be used to initialize the package. We could do this by directly initializing the handler struct, but I like using factory functions with a config to make it clear what fields we need to be defined for the package to function properly. In this factory, we'll add a route group. This sets up the base application URL. We then add a get method to the base router, which returns some basic JSON. This is the same JSON we previously added to main.go, so let's update our main.go with the handler initialization. We insert the initialization of the handler here, we're now making use of the new handler factory we just created. Also, make sure to import the handler package in your list of imports here, if it is not automatically imported for you. Let's return to the handler and add some route methods. We'll add these handler methods at the bottom of the file. These are all of the handler methods we'll be using for our application. For now, each method will merely return a message. These are all of the handlers we'll be using in our application. For now, each route will merely return a message which identifies which handler has been called. We have a me handler for getting the current logged in user. We have sign up, sign in, and sign out for handling user authentication. The tokens method will be used for refreshing a user's access or ID token. We'll go into this in a lot of detail that only a true nerd will appreciate at a later point. We also add handlers for adding, updating, or deleting a user image. Finally, we add a handler for updating the user's details like name, email address, and website. We now need a way for HTTP requests to interact with these handler methods. We'll do this back inside of the factory method right here. I've replaced the previous get route with routes for the handlers we've just created. We'll discuss more on the choice of the HTTP verbs, i.e. get, or post, or put, or delete, in subsequent tutorials. Notice that the handler methods are called on H, which is the handler we've initialized in this new handler factory. 
This will give our handlers access to those services that I mentioned earlier. And I'm referring to those services which will eventually be added to the handler struct, which is defined above and initialized in new handler. With Docker Compose up and running, you should now be able to make requests to these endpoints using the client of your choice. I use a lot of Postman, but here's a quick example with curl. I'm going to open up another terminal window, and that was just giving me the option to choose a directory. And let's curl the get route for me. All right, so here is our curl command to get the me route. And it returns, hello, it's me. Now let's try one more just for good measure. Let's try posting to the sign in route. And hello, it's sign in. I encourage you to test the other endpoints with the client of your choice. The final thing I'd like to do is create an environment file in the root project directory, which can be used for configuring the development environment. So let's go into the memorizer folder and create a file called .env.dev. And the .dev extension is merely to let us know that this is for development environment variables only. Inside, we're going to create an account API URL, which is the base URL for this application. Let's save this file. We'll eventually be adding potentially sensitive information to this file, so I'm going to create a git ignore file in the root directory as well. Inside of this git ignore, add .env .dev. And in my case, that just grays out the .env.dev, which is to let us know that it will not be added to the Git repository. We also need to configure our container to read the environment variables from this file we just created. Docker Compose supports this via the env file key. So let's open up docker-compose.yaml. Let's find our account service and let's add an m file key, which my autocompletion shows. And we'll add .env.dev, as this file is in the same folder as Docker Compose. We need to do one more thing before we restart our development environment, and that is to inject this environment variable into our handler application where we used the base URL. So let's go to handler. We did that here in the group. Make sure to import the OS package, which I have done, and use the getEnv method to import an environment variable, which is defined in this string. All right, let's go back to our other window that was running Docker Compose. We're going to stop this as we need to reload Docker to be able to read that environment variable. So let's again run Docker Compose up. The application is running again and we see all of the newly created API endpoints. Let's go back to the other terminal window and try curling again. Hey, it's sign in. Let's try the other one. Hey, it's me. All right, damas y caballeros, that's all for today. Next time, we'll cover the application's architecture. I know that I said we would do that today, but I wanted to avoid creating another half-hour monstrosity. Anywho, please remember to like and subscribe, you knuckleheads. Oh, so we're not supposed to insult the viewers? Oh, okay, I got it.